Hi guys, today we are looking at calculating hotel prices in a C++ program. And for that, we're going to look again at base and derived classes. All right, as you can see, the uh, instructions for this hacker rank challenge look a bit lengthy. So I'm going to try and simplify them for you. Basically what this does, this program does is uh, we have two uh, different classes, hotel room and hotel apartments. Hotel apartments is inheriting from hotel room right here. And these classes are supposed to enable users to make bookings. So whenever we instantiate these, any of these classes, we have to pass the number of uh, bedrooms and the number of bathrooms. And then we can get the price by applying this formula here. This is also what you can see on the left side of my screen here. So one bedroom is $50 and then one bathroom is 100. And then for a hotel apartment, the uh, price formula is the same thing, but we need to add 100 USD. That's what you see here. And then uh, we have a main program here uh, where we, uh, we just store the number of bookings. So uh, this would be a one booking. Notice the for loop here, because there are many bookings. Then we instantiate these objects right here we store them in the vector called rooms. And then here we calculate the profits by looping through that vector and adding up the prices together. So the uh, input is gonna look something like this. We're gonna say for instance, for today we had two bookings, so number two. Then booking one was a standard room or in other words, you can also call that a normal hotel room. So a standard room with three bedrooms and one bathroom. So the formula is what you see here in this case, uh, standard room. The profit for that booking was three bedrooms times 50 because one bedroom is $50. And then we had one bathroom times 100. You add them up together and the profit for that booking was $250. Then for the second booking, which is this apartment right here, one bedroom and one bathroom, that corresponds to a hotel apartment. The formula is what I've written right here. So the, the profit for that hotel apartment booking was one bedroom times 50 plus one bathroom times 100, which is the same thing as the formula above, but then you add $100 to it and you also get 250. So the total profit for the day was 250 here plus 250 here, and it was 500. And that is what they explain here uh, in that section of the instructions. But the issue here is we have to debug this program because it's giving us some errors. So I'm gonna run this code here. We are supposed to get 500. I'm going to run this code and you will see that we get 400. We get 400 here. This is our output. We were expected to return 500. Now, this is actually very simple, this issue, and you only have to add one keyword to the code that they've given here. If you see here, this is the constructor, right? This is the get price method from the base class. It returns a value. This is all correct. But if you go to the inherited, uh, the derived class here, hotel apartments, you can see we have the constructor. This is correct. And then we have this int get price again, the same name as the method in the base class, but the implementation changes. So you can see here we have the base class here as a namespace. So we are calling the get price method from the hotel room, which is our base class, and we are adding 100 to it and returning it. Now, in, in theory, it's, it sounds like it's correct because we are just changing the implementation and we are applying that to our derived class. But in practice, it's not going to work because whenever we call that in our method, see here um, in our loop, uh, check this section of this um, code that I can touch. We are looping through our rooms and we are adding up the, the prices by calling get price on every room. So whenever we reach a hotel apartment object, which is uh, an instance of a derived class, we are calling this get price method. But implicitly, it is actually calling the get price method from the base class. So if we want to maintain this method signature, but change the implementation in our derived class, then we need to make this a virtual method. So you will do this. You will add that keyword in the method uh, for the base class. So now get price is a virtual method and we can override it in our derived class. So that is called polymorphism. 
in object-oriented programming, and that is what you are seeing in uh, C++. So let's run this code again now. And now we get 500 because whenever we reach that hotel apartment objects right here and we call get price, the compiler knows this is a virtual method. So it's going to check the implementation on the derived class and apply that. So that was it. A simple word that we have to add. But you can see that sometimes when you debug programs, um, you need to look really carefully and make sure you understand how things work. Otherwise, you might try and just refactor your entire code, whereas it's not necessary. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you guys liked it, uh, please make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications. I'm just going to submit this code right now to make sure that we pass all the test cases. And we did. So that was it. A simple keyword. And I will see you next time. Bye.